Well, hi everyone, thanks for tuning in today. My name is Christine Hendry and I'm the CEO of the Spinal Research Institute. I'm joined today by one of our ambassadors, Jason Ellery. Hi, Jason. Hey. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good to, good to catch up again. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Um, Jason is husband to Nicole and uh, father to two very active young boys, Kai and Geordie. And Jason was also a member of the um, Australian wheelchair rugby team, which won the world championship in 2014. And it was the first time Australia had won um, the world championship. So Jason, that your involvement in that was only three years after your spinal cord injury. What influence did that have on your life following your injury? And how did you get involved in that? Um, I initially got involved in wheelchair rugby. Um, I saw it being placed whilst I was in rehab. Um, I thought it was something fun and interesting to get into. I liked sport all my life and wanted to continue playing sport um, since suffering a spinal cord injury. So uh, I saw it getting played in rehab, had a bit of a crack at it. And then once I was um, out in the community, wanted to get involved and did so. And it led to some pretty cool places I had lots of um, positive, positive impacts on my life, learned from other people, learned lots of many things from people in similar situations, um, obviously helped build up my physical strength as well. So uh, being involved in sport was a fantastic opportunity for myself. Yeah. And you would have traveled with that as well? Yeah, definitely through, um, I was lucky enough to be able to play and represent Victoria for a little while. Then obviously, as you mentioned earlier, represent Australia for a few years as well. That um, presented many travel opportunities. We got to go to Denmark, Canada, um, America, New Zealand a couple of times. So that was fantastic. Yeah. And then have you traveled since as a family? Yeah. Um, not too many times with a family. We've been to um, yeah, a few different countries with the boys, but it does seem difficult. But <laughs> getting involved in sport definitely helped um, and being able to travel through sport with other people and learn from them has been able to take those learnings and into my personal travel. It's been fantastic. Um, there was a, uh, my wife and I went to Mexico just for our honeymoon um, quite a while ago and traveling for 30 odd hours. So um, it's quite a challenge, but um, some of the things I've learned from experienced travelers with a spinal cord injury through sport, um, where it's fantastic and I learned from them and was able to yeah, travel there successfully with no, no dramas. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, excellent. Um, so you recently wrote an article for the SRI's social media about how um, you're managing during the pandemic. So I was just wondering if you could talk a bit more about that, about what you and your family are doing and, and how you're managing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely been challenging, being sort of locked inside the house essentially. Um, but, you know, we get by. It's been, it's hard, but it's also got some good positives out of it as well, getting to spend extra time with the, the kids that I wouldn't usually have time to do um, and making a conscious effort to be present with them and spend time with them and enjoy the little things. That, um, no doubt they can be challenging. Yeah. Um, sometimes the days seem like a long day, but um, the, the good definitely outweighs the bad. Yeah. So, yeah. You've been able to take some positives out of this situation? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think uh, moving forward, I'll, I'll definitely continue to, um, yeah, make conscious effort to spend time with them, whether it's something big or something little. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, 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 yeah, try and draw out of it what you can. You can only control what I can control um, and do my best to, to do that and not worry too much about all the other bad things that are happening everywhere else. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things, obviously, with coronavirus, there's the increased risk for people with spinal cord injury around um, respiratory complications and severe pneumonia. So it does put you um, in a position of vulnerability. But we both listened to a podcast recently from the UK called This Is Spinal Crap. And they had a really interesting point that they raised that um, people with spinal cord injury or anyone that might be considered to be in a vulnerable position 
actually have a really good insight into um, what it's like to be in that position and what it's like to be isolated, for example, if you've been through or if you've had a long hospital stay or if you've been in rehab after an injury and can offer insights into to the rest of the community community about how to manage in situations like this is that something that you'd ever considered because it was a really new and interesting insight for me yeah that's something i'd never really considered until um, i was introduced to the idea and then uh thinking about it yeah it's it's actually um quite interesting because it's not really the first time i've been isolated i spent um lots of well, isolated from the community is in, in a sense um you know, I spent a, quite a bit of time in rehab after suffering my spinal cord injury and many people with spinal cord injuries do. Um, and also um, people with spinal cord injuries also can spend time isolated due to um, com health complications, mm -hmm. uh, whether it be infections or pressure sores or things like that where people aren't able to carry on with their normal lives as they, they wish to. Um, so mm -hmm. it's, it's quite an interesting idea. I found it um really i guess we people with spinal cord injuries or disabilities or um I know, yeah quite a broad range of people a broad range of people um can offer some resilience they learn from these experiences and can show others that um, yeah it's not all bad and continue to living um, mm. and draw positive from it yeah and that kind of got to look forward i suppose and yeah. That, yeah, that these things will pass and we'll adjust. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I think um, not dwelling on the bad things and not thinking about things that you can't control and just do your best to um, control what you can. Yeah. Um, doing the best in the situation. Yeah. And I think what it's also introduced is um, for most people um, is a new way of working as well. So, adjusting to working remotely and doing things like these Zoom calls. And um, I think, you know, you've raised that, you know, for people with disability and accessibility, you know, give some additional accessibility as well. Yeah, I think post this pandemic, um, it's going to offer a lot of more opportunities for people with disabilities or access issues or whatever it might be to, to have more access to online businesses, essentially. Um, Online shopping has always been pretty big, but now a whole bunch more businesses and things have been forced online due to lockdowns. And now um, it's given more access to a huge group of people who, who may not have, it may have been years down the track, but were forced into it early. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk to you about was the church. So at the SRI we're doing uh, research collaboration and also looking at how we can better engage people with spinal cord injury in the research process. I'm wondering, have you been involved in any research yourself? Uh, yes, I was involved in some research um, just a pretty short time after my injury. I can't, unfortunately now I can't remember what the research was about. Um, but I did have a good experience though. I learned a little bit. Um, and yeah, I was keen to help out, but unfortunately I never found any outcomes from the study and it would have been really good to, to get that and, and even to touch base, you know, years down the track, maybe five, 10 years down the track to see if that research was even implemented or if it went to further study, um, something along those lines. So yeah, um, I think it'd be really beneficial if more people could get involved with research and yeah, collaborate. Mm. Yeah, so if you had have found out what the outcomes of that research was, then you become an advocate for that research. And that's something that we're trying to do at the SRI is establish um, a, a process where people can get involved right from the beginnings of research through to participating in research and then um, how they can be an advocate for the outcomes of the research. Um, and in your case, if you had have known about yeah. That's something that I've been able to um, to um, share yeah. with people. Yeah, and if I found out about the the outcomes, I would have definitely been an advocate for it. If it was something that was, it's not just about um, 
me curing for making daily living easier for people with spinal cord injuries. So whether it's something small or something significant, um, yeah, I would have been more than happy to be an advocate for it and push for it if I was, if I knew what yeah. the study, if I could remember what the study was, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and yeah, if I was updated with the current outcomes. Yeah, well, it's, um, yeah. I think that's, um, yeah, yeah, something we'd touching like on that a little bit. Forward. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No, it's something that we'd like to change moving forward. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, correct. Excellent. Okay, well, look, thank you for joining me today. Um, really appreciate your time, Jason. Um, if you want to no find out more about Jason's story, you can find it on the SRI's website, which is the SRI.org. And we'll be sharing this video online as well. Thanks, Jason. It's been really great catching up with you today. Great, no worries. Thanks for your time. Good to chat. Thanks, Jason. Bye.